interesting note as mental health is a state of well-being in which every individual realizes his or her full potential, can cope with the no normal stresses of life, can work productively and fruitfully, and is able to make a contribution to his or her community. Now, according to World Health Organization, depression and common mental health disorders affect millions and approximately one in five Nigerians experience these mental health problems each year. Mental health is, a na is a, in, in Nigeria rather is a significant public health issue. However, only a small fraction of these people receive treatment. Mm. Inadequate funding, stigma, and brain drain remain the biggest obstacles to delivering mental health services to Nigerians. And the government at all levels need to increase their efforts and reduce neglect in the sector. As we mark World Health or World Mental Health Day 2023, today we're asking, can mental health become a universal human right? Now, please, let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 Okay, so for the longest time in Nigeria, a lot of people associated mental health uh, issues with, uh, what do they call them? Uh, they say Yabalev, they, they give you all sorts of names, you know, and all of that. Um, but I think over time, again, with globalization, with a lot of awareness globally that has happened over the years, there's a lot more receptive, uh, what's it called, receptiveness when it comes to understanding that people truly go through certain phases in their life. I remember there was a time in my life, a very low point in my life, where, you know, uh, I think I, even though it wasn't diagnosed, I believe, because my friend, she's a mental health um, expert, right? I believe based on the symptoms I hear her talk about, I, I think I was going through depression, but even I did not know. Uh, it, was a, it was a downtime. You get, you be dehydrated. You are drinking water, but you're feeling very parched, very dehydrated. You're not motivated. You're not, you're not willing to get up to do anything. You're just there, you know, sunk inside yourself. You don't want to go anywhere. So, I mean, I believe that the Nigerian um, state, as it is, is a stressor. Yeah. Do you understand? Like, literally, everything stresses, stresses us. Yeah. Yeah. So if you want to even look at these numbers, I mean, from World Health Organization, they say one in five. I even believe it is one in three or one in two. Because as three of us did for this place here, <laughs> you know, one person is going definitely, you understand? At either point, in, like you would go through certain levels of mental, um, what's it called, stresses and all of that, and it would just you know take a toll on you. Some people now, they've not been able to manage it well. It has gone all the way to the extreme, but it's a big issue, and you know, and for for me, I feel like I agree with the topic that says it should be, you know, a human right. It should mm -hmm. be part of your fundamental human right for your sanity. That way. You can then tie it to many things. You can then demand for certain things, better living standards. Like, literally, going on the road is depressing. Today, mm. immediately I entered the road, I saw you have a 31 minutes delay. <laughs> As I heard 31 minutes delay, so I have to go through a very bumpy road mm. just to avoid that 31 minutes delay. delay. That's stressing my mental health. Mm. Do you understand? Like, the, the way it's going like this, my brain will be shaking. So, so most times, <laughs> I have a headache, wow. maybe. <laughs> <laughs> what do you I say? have to say it. So that really? we can lay the foundation, but seriously, <laughs> Lagos is 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 a dead for me. It's like it's a it's a catalyst for abnormalities in your in your in your mental health, honestly. Mm. But let me hear your thoughts. What do you think, right? Um, should we start to really consider mental health being a universal human right? <laughs> I know I said I was going to be on the opposing, opposing side, but I just can't help it. Um, yes, I think it should be, you know, part of the human rights. And I think it's something that we should address from an, from an early stage. You know, so you have teenagers now who go through depression and, you know, there's that stigma from the Nigerian African parents. You know, that is that age that it starts, you know, when you're just new sort of new into the world you know and you're you know you're kind of lost trying to find yourself where you fit and sometimes you're able to you know manage it manage it well and 
sometimes you're not. Mm -hmm. So it's essential that, you know, if there's something that it can be pushed out there that can be emphasized on, like even when you go to hospitals, you know, the same way you do like your physical checkups, you know, mm -hmm. there should be a section for your mental health to say, you know, Absolutely. how are you doing mentally, you know, mm -hmm. you know, what kind of thoughts are you having with yourself? Yeah. You know, because how you think is gonna reflect on, you know, Anything. your body as well, you know, um, you know, how your body responds to you know, distress. Even so, with the medications. Yes, you understand. So it's it's very important if we can start at an early stage, you know, actually from teenage years, just even self development, you know, proper guidance, you know, would be nice, you know. So we don't wait till the point where the person is about to jump off in Ted Milan Bridge and say, No, 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 don't don't do it now. We're here for you. Mm. Like mm. I mean, you know I get you. I get you. And even to the common man who has no maybe no sort of support system, you know, there should, the same way there's hospital for if you have an injury, right, to go, not everybody even now can afford to go to a hospital, but it will be nice to say, okay, you know, I just, I need to talk to somebody, you know, their thoughts I'm having in my head, you know, but being even able to come out and say it is something I think in this part of the world we need to embrace. Mm. How about you, then? Okay, well, I actually also agree that um, uh, mental health should be um, everybody's human rights, right? Because the truth is that, according to what she said, you, just when we have hospitals for when people are sick, we should have um, maybe clinics for mental health, you know, people to talk. But the thing is that we have therapies, don't we? They're not just exactly affordable. So I think that in, in making... Okay, well, maybe because these things are actually privatized, that could also be why. So I think if the government really wants to um, see to making um, mental health a basic human right for every individual, I think they need to start off by creating a government-owned... I don't know if we should, I should call it an hospital now. <laughs> I don't know where, like, where the hospital was. I mean, creating a government-owned hospital yeah. where, you know, even if we're going to... It's just like no more... I mean, <laughs> but for real, it's just if you're going to, pay, even if you're going to pay, it's not going to be so much. Because imagine I am depressed now, and then I'm thinking, okay, I need to talk to a therapist, and then I go to the therapist, and the person says it's a hundred k per session. The depression will disappear. The depression will think, I mean, but the, <laughs> is the depression really even disappearing, or the, the depression is just hibernating because what you just, what you were just met with, <laughs> is even <laughs> more depressing. It's more depressing. So I mean, I mean, these things. These things are not entirely rocket science, mm -hmm. if we're being honest. These things are very doable. I mean, I understand that um, funding is a major part of why um, this mental health issue has not particularly been taken up. I get And I also understand that the stigma. I think sensitization of the general public will actually do, will go a long way. So just, just like people talk about abortions, right? I mean, people in marriages literally have abortions because probably they're not ready for the child at the time. So, I mean, and I don't see... Maybe I'm, you can say I'm pro-abortionist, but I'm just like, you're not ready. Sometimes it comes as a mistake, especially for couples like that in an actual marriage. Maybe not a mistake child because they were actually engaged in the act. But the point is, <laughs> they were not just ready at the time. So, but people stigmatize, they look, ah, you've done abortion, you've done... I'm, no, I don't think that that's it. It's just someone who is um, liberated, you know, making an actual decision for themselves. So, I think that we should, um, the government or even everybody, all of us actually, general sensitization of the general public will actually go a long way to make people understand that, look, someone with a mental health problem is not a mad person. Because usually when you say you are probably depressed or you have anxiety or yeah. you have one thing, one thing, one thing. You think that we're lazy. You, you, you know, you, exactly. There's also the part of saying, oh, you're just especially African parents. I mean, no offense to African parents, right? But imagine you're in an African home. <laughs> you're in an African home and genuinely, because the truth is that when teenagers are growing from being teenagers, um, teenagers rather to be, is it adults Adult, now? Yeah. Yeah, there's this, there's just a lot. Yeah, there's always a lot. First, you're trying to find your purpose. You're trying to even know who you actually are because it feels like you knew who you were before. And then as you're growing, you're evolving. You get, you're and evolving. the problems are evolving. You're becoming too. a different person. So, you know, that transitioning period can make you fall into some, it can make you fall in, into a dark place. Let me not entirely call it depression, but into a dark place. So, imagine you being in an African home now and you are genuinely in a dark place. And your mom is saying, go and turn some more. And you're like, Mommy, I would 
just give me some time. She doesn't understand why she's giving you any time. So, but if this person is um, educated enough to know that, look, when someone is actually acting down, it's not because they are trying to be lazy or something. I don't think anybody just willingly wants to be down. Unless people that are sad is sharp. Some people sharp. Yeah, that's why I said. Unless people that are sad is no, But I don't but think... The lazy part. Yeah. yeah. So, so some... It's, it's fine that some people are lazy. Yeah. So there's a thin line. Yeah. Yeah, there is a thin line because so some I, people are generally actually are genuine. So yeah. I, I understand the part that um, you're saying. It's a very valid point where... People need to pay attention to other people. <laughs> why, why is Mary looking at because me? Because I know you're going to come for the Gen Z. No, so, no, no, no. Funny enough, I was not planning to come for the Gen Z. So the way it works, you must study people's body languages, yeah. right? Especially when you know that you have people that are emotionally sensitive around you. When they are a bit, if they are hyper, 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 and all of a sudden they go quiet, that would be a good time to ask, are you okay? If there's anything wrong and all of that. But we don't pay attention to those things because yeah. also... We're not sensitized enough to know. Um, a suicide does not just happen. No. It, there's a build-up. So somebody must have done something. There are different things. You'll be seeing so many things. All that issues of not being interested in life anymore. You know, not doing things anymore. Maybe they were very active. They're no longer active. They're not even interested, you know, and all of that. All those things are signs that eventually builds up to that point where the person just believes that, mm, I don't have anything here left for me. And they then take the decisions to take their lives, right? So, I mean, I get you. That sensitization is very key. But you see, where I do not have um, faith is a government that has not been able to provide basic health care. Do you understand? How can that government provide mental health care? Because basic health care, it's even an attack on your physical body. So you have a malaria, you have all of this, you know, you have, um, you're dealing with like physical pain, you know, and all of that. You have a government that is not able to cater to that problem, then you're not asking for the ones that they cannot even understand. Mental health is not possible. What I feel like, if we truly want to change the, 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 the healthcare landscape in Nigeria, there has to be a lot more private investors in the, in the industry. Yeah. I mean, so I was, I, I, I just finished, and she'll say I've come again. Uh, I've just finished my course, <laughs> you know, online. And the truth is, the majority of that conversation from the beginning of the course to the end of the course was on healthcare. Because that's the case study that they are using. Okay. And if you see the way the model, the, the, health city, um, the, the health city models in India, the way they built it, they built it to the point that even the common man can afford uh, or access, rather, can access, what's it called, high-level quality healthcare. So think of any of the big hospitals in Lagos or Abuja or whatever. Those are the kind of healthcare um, services that a corn roaster by the road is able to afford in India. Why? Because private investors came and says, you know what, I need to make healthcare affordable. So when it comes to healthcare, we cannot rely on the government anymore. We need to focus on private investors coming into the space. So to your point about whether we have government, we have government because I know that my friend used to, she used to go and do some time in, I think it's in Yaba, there's a, there's a psychiatric um, whatever, clinic or whatever that is owned by the government. Yeah. She, she worked there for a bit, you yeah. know, then t before she now started doing her own private practice. Yeah, so there are people that are actually there. But the truth is, because the hospitals are not enough, they're not even able to handle. And those people with psychological evaluation and all of these things that has to do with mental health, they have to be retooling and retooling and retooling. It means that for every time there are issues or whatever there has to be continuous learning you're supposed to be taking them to go and learn about best practices around the world you know and all of those things where is the fund for that mm -hmm. so if you ask me i would say let's avoid government in this mm -hmm. if we can get private investors to come in you know because mental health is not particularly cheap managing it it is because i have seen people that you know i mean somebody called me and said that oh that they needed counseling for a couple that they've been this they've been this and i called my counselor I should actually give them the best, you know, the lowest, lowest deal. They still run away because, <laughs> you know, because the, the, the it's, fee, it's, it's, it's the fee expensive. is not particularly that, easy. Yeah, exactly, you know? because yeah, it is expensive. mostly privatized. Uh, so you know, anything that is privatized is always So we should expensive. we should look in the direction of impact ventures, right? Like impact businesses. Because if we look at the, uh, government, what government can do mm -hmm. in that instance is provide the facility, provide 
so things like basic things like power facility yeah. access that's okay. what government can do and give policies in a way that those people are giving maybe tax holidays or whatever yeah. then they can run the practice at a very very crushed price you know I was at a meeting today and they were talking about an entire building being powered by, by, by um, solar solutions, right? Mm. Imagine if we start to have hospitals, for instance, that the government has built fully powered. They're not thinking of generator. They're not thinking of all of this. So that cost that you're talking about, mm. it comes down. So if you are asking, where would the government come in? Mm. It will, the government will come in in things like that. That you're thinking, okay, cheaper power solutions, energy solutions, uh, access. You understand? You're talking about the, the structure, infrastructure. And yes, that's where the government stops. So in the running of those, uh, um, what's it called, those hospitals, let the government then bring in private investors. Let them come and run, and run it fully independent of the government. Then they can now discuss maybe the modalities and all of that. In that way, we'll find a solution, not just to mental health, but general health in Nigeria. But if we continue to play the way it is like this, it will be difficult for us to even pay attention to mental health because even our health care is in shambles. I don't know if you guys have seen that video that um, been going around um, social media about uh, maternal mortality. Mm -hmm. RMD posted it. A lot of celebrities have posted it. They all acted in it where they put a, a, a plane filled with pregnant women mm -hmm. and there was a plane crash and they mm -hmm. all died. Oh my so, yes, and this one was part of it. Oh. They said that that is like they were trying to depict the vivid picture of what um, maternal mortality is like in Nigeria. That that's the number of women that die, you know, on a daily basis when it comes to matter. So just imagine that picture. You need to paint that picture. So there are pressing issues, right, when, that is stressing the healthcare sector. So if you say that you want to now bring in government into mental health, they will never take it seriously because particularly mental health is not that disease mm. that it shows on you. No. You know, so it's something that is internal. So people don't even understand the pain. Even they mm. themselves involved. They don't, in do you understand? They, they have... <laughs> what is uh, the new minister something? Out of the uh, uh, <laughs> But it's okay. Maybe I did not hear that. I was <laughs> Alright, thanks for staying with us. If you just tuned in, it's our ladies' night out and we're discussing can mental health become a universal human right? Uh, please let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 1803 You can also tweet, uh, um, sorry. Let's leave the X matter for now. Our phone line is now <laughs> open. The number to call is 70 Remember the rules. Turn off the volume of whatever device it is you're calling or you're watching us from. So when you call, we don't get a feedback. All right. So, I mean, uh, okay, Mary, what did you say before you went on the break? I think even the, our, our government, you know, our uncles and aunties, you know, I feel like some of them might have you know some mental it's issues it's not, yeah. that they are not to say. it's not mind that they are not addressing or yeah. that they're not even they can't even you know bring themselves to the um you know this thing that, you know this thing that do me eh? i want to do to you what i suffered mm. it's kind of what we and it's, 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 it's a bad thing that is happening in nigeria yeah what i went through you have to go through it you have to go through it yes. mm -hmm. but I, I also think that um another point of influence that can help out is religion so in terms of like churches and now more. let me tell you why religion is very tricky because if you go to a maybe a, a sister in church like someone that shall older than you mm. or spiritually and whatnot and then you explain to them that okay i'm experiencing xyz xyz thing the next thing you're going to say you. The next thing I'm probably going to say is let's pray you probably need, uh, uh, because it has happened to me before but, several times but, in fact but we can't deny the fact that Prayer also does help now. Yes. Do you understand? What, what I'm trying to say is them even promoting the awareness of mental health. You know how they do, um, I don't know, what, what's the word? When maybe like they gather people to say health professionals yes. coming to talk yes. to you. Yes. You know, so it's, it's the same way, you know, sensitization. Yes. I agree with you. you know, to say, oh, okay, mental health, it might not, you know, exactly be that you can just walk into any church member and just say, "I ah, see, see what I'm going through." <laughs> you can't just well, tell. You can't tell anybody. Yes, they, they, they have a, it will be because a counseling department, and it's not just anybody. normal people who turn into exactly. counselors. Yeah, okay, trained that works. professionals. Yes, that works. so yes. so because because, because really um. Religion is a serious point of influence yes, in this country. Do you yes. understand? Yes. So if 
most parents have once they once you say in church the pastor says this thing this it's okay it's all right well let me tell you something i have a friend that is a counselor she's been counseling for years now happily married thank god for all her life but she will tell you she always says her story you know that uh, it was because of church that she got her first experience of rape and it was the pastor that raped her <laughs> right so you see this that's why a lot of people are now a lot more conscious like in those not like in those days where parents just mm. trust because these people are men before they are men of god true i mean she at some point was almost like everywhere she went to they wrote to rape me on her forehead because mm. every single time um, she, there was something, there was a tantrum or something. They took her to church and the pastors would have their way with her. You know, so um, when it comes to issues around churches, we need to be very careful. Very careful. Extremely because careful. Imagine someone praying depression out of mm. you. Or delivering depression out of you. It doesn't work that it way. Doesn't, no, it doesn't. You know? It doesn't work that it way. It doesn't work that there's, way. There's, it, so it's a, it's a chemical imbalance in your mind that has happened. So we need to be able to... Trace it back to you your know. mind and restructure your brain again. Exactly. Sometimes, you know, it's sometimes people do it with a lot of therapy and, you know, all the tools in, 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 in psychology. But some other people need to even go to the extent of taking medications yeah. for it. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not something you just say, okay, let's pray our way out of it. And which is what I think a lot more conscious pastors now are realizing. And that's why they are moving away from all that counseling department. So even when you see... The, the new generation pastors counseling department they are they are laced with professional, professional. mental health yeah, specialists so, so they, yeah they, they can they can um, yeah. take on so you yeah, I mean you cannot take the way, take away the pl the place of prayer absolutely prayer is very important because absolutely. you need to pray yeah. and you know then of course you would then have there, there has to be some it's like the onion peel you have to take it layer by layer right. and, and unbundle and it's the really mind. Not a, it's not a day journey it's, it's not a decision way. because it's just a like journey. when you pray now by tomorrow you should be journey. fine because i mean you've prayed to god these things don't work like that because the truth is that some people suffer depression for instance some people suffer the a depression for just three months some people suffer it for a year some people suffer for even more yeah, some thing. people even have to be on antidepressants so there's there's just so many i think that I mean, also the fact that mental health, sorry, Mary, yeah. I think that the fact that mental health has also, the word mental health has been bastardized, I think is also a problem. Because now it's even very difficult to know someone who really has a mental health issue from someone who is just claiming to have a mental health issue. For instance, ADHD, that's um, attention deficit um, and you hyper, saw that. something, something. Yes, yeah, so you know, many people are now, if you go on Twitter, everybody's, oh, I have, I have a G. I have a G. <laughs> You guys. I mean, I understand that there are some that are not. You don't even have to go to like a professional to get it diagnosed. Mm. I mean, when you like see well, certain symptoms, be, yeah. you get you just know that okay, this is what it is. Some you literally need to be diagnosed. So some people plus undiagnosed plus one that you don't even know anything HD, about. HD. You get oh, I have OCD. So I think OCD and HDHD are the they are the ones that have been bastardized. Most so it's just... Are you there? Good good evening. Oh, we lost. Oh, sorry. Oh, well, wow. apologies. I, so I get that HD, the A ADHD, ADHD yeah. attention deficit. You see that thing, eh? Sometimes my sister is so upset that so because again there's mental laziness. Yes. So with with children, you need to be very careful. You must observe children. Children' natural sense is they don't want to do something, right? Mm -hmm. But let's take a caller. Thank you for calling. Hello. Hello. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Wow, the network is not friendly. Oh, wow, sorry. Let me see. Let me see if I can get back. Okay. Let me try and get back. Okay. I mean, <laughs> so, um, you know how some children just don't want to do their work? Yeah. You know, so you need to be able to really, really go the extra mile to be sure that they're not suffering from dyslexia, they're not suffering from, you know, uh, whatever it is that the autism and all of that mm -hmm. but because some children you so you really must go to a professional and they take them i think we have another caller yes. you're live is it good hello hello yes hi thank you for calling today not today <laughs> apologies sorry hello yes we can hear you go ahead hello we can hear you 
Okay, so I think when you call, just talk because we can hear you. Obviously, they cannot hear us, you know. So, I mean, yeah, Mary, you're going to say something. <laughs> I, I think um, we also focus a lot on depression and anxiety is, you know, left out of it. Anxiety is very, it's very, as, it's, it's as bad. It's terrible. You just have, like, see, the amount of people that mm -hmm. are so, that get so anxious. Is it, over the tiniest of. You then move to insomnia. Look, mm. it's absolutely ridiculous. Like I, so because me, I talk to myself all the time, and I always have to bring myself. Back. Do you have a call? <laughs> we have a caller. Okay, let's take a call. Can you hear us? You're live. Hello, good evening. Hello. Good evening. Go ahead. Okay, this is Celestine. Hi, thank Hi. you for calling. Okay, please. I I I love the topic you are treating tonight. So this topic, mental health, it has to do with many things. Mm -hmm. Now, like here in Lagos, says, the traffic and everything, mm -hmm. one being in a bus or in a car for a long time, can affect the mental health. Mm -hmm. yeah, you understand? Mm -hmm. Even, even economic stress, stress at work, so I just I wish people are watching this talk, which I'm watching you people tonight, you know, at least so that they can know that mental health, many things can affect the mental health. Many things. Thank you, sir. And in the, in, yes. If we they say that in this our country, Nigeria. This our country, Nigeria, and we don't we don't feel it. That's why it is some people they, they behave abnormal. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <It's not abnormal. laughs> Yeah, I get you. I, I mean, anxiety. Hmm. Anxiety God. is... is, is like, a, I can stay up all night easy. when I'm anxious, right? I can stay up all night. Like, literally, sleep will just disappear. Everything will just disappear. It's even, and it's a deeper issue, right? It's even a lot because it can lead to so many more... Yeah. You just realize that mm. you're always rushing. Mm -hmm. Even in terms of, like, time management mm -hmm. yeah. and stuff. So you're always rushing, you know... Your, when when someone as well that is rushing, that is, you know, anxious where they're going, both of you meet, is a clash. So they why are you rushing to? And then you mm. realize, oh, you two, you are actually rushing. So mm. where, where, where are we are going you? to? Let's Just take a call out. <laughs> your life. Go ahead. Yes, so I think the network is better now. They're not hearing me, I talk. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Youngest old man. Even, even the, the, the telecommunication, uh, whatever, is facing me. <laughs> <laughs> Very good in bringing us up to speed is some things that we've forgotten. Mm. Me, these days, I've forgotten about anything mental health. Too. <laughs> yeah, I'm busy reading some books on how to su survive the, the how to survive uh, <laughs> Bala Blue and Bulabai. <laughs> the general book I'm reading is Against the Next Election How to Grab It and Take It as it's not given a la carte. So I'm forgetting on the, to, to focus on our mental health. So I think I have to bring back that into perspective. However, on a serious note, you see, the issue is that most of these things are fundamental and it needs a lot of monitoring and enlightenment. Our people are not aware. Yeah. Just believe me when I say that. Mm. Our people are not aware. A lot of things that happens in life, we take it to the wrong channel. Mm. People are going through a lot of deliverance, not knowing that all they need is just to get the psychologist to sit them down and run through their profile and advise them on what to do. Mm. But then they like, carry one, one pound three, this thing, they slap the person's face up and down. They carry and go on the beaches throughout the night. And mm. that person is just there worsening the issue. Mm. So for me, I just believe that if we can get um, a divisional place, like even in churches where you get a lot of gatherings, where they can give like 15 or 10 minutes out of their um, uh, what do they call it? Their prosperity preaching to educate the, the church uh, people okay. on how to handle mental health. Because sometimes some some of us come with it from the one to life. You understand? It's people like autism, uh, people that have autism. Mm -hmm. Some parents are too busy that they don't know that their child is suffering that. Mm -hmm. yeah. You understand? And hey, all these uh, introverts, whatever, whatever. How do you even know your child is introvert? When you leave by 5 p.m., you come out by 11 p.m., mm. all these stuff. But if you can get people, because most people I can understand, there was one um, training I went through. So they now asked us about target target targets. 
and the best place to get that. Somebody mentioned church. Mm. And you know that that company has to pay to a church to allow them to talk for five minutes. Mm. And it worked perfectly because that was the only place you can get people. On that place they speak about was their power and other places. Mm. So for me, I think that if we can take those things to religious How organizations so that they can educate people, mm. you understand? Just mm. give them that enlightenment. Absolutely. They from there. Because when somebody is having anger issues, sometimes it's not only anger issues. Yeah. Maybe it's health. Yeah. It's having, it's not too okay upstairs. Yeah. But you think it's just, I mean, the person they invest too much. That is not the language we use locally. True. Yeah. Very true. Thank you so much, youngest old man. Well, I mean, it's just to reiterate what Mary was saying. Go ahead, yeah. quickly. Well, I was going to say something to buttress his last point. I think that as individuals, we should also look, I don't think that we look out for ourselves enough. Because it's one thing for us to say, okay, the government should do this, we should privatize this, yadi 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 like that. But then if we don't also look out for our own selves, I don't see anything possibly working. Because for someone who suffers, I don't even know, whatever mental issue anybody's suffering, you should come to an awareness where you know your trigger points. You know, and I also understand that triggers can change over time because the truth is that you think you know all your triggers until something else happens that has probably never happened before and then it just triggers you and then you just act out and act out of um, place and stuff like that. But then again, if you, if I believe that if we master the act of knowing ourselves, Studying you know, knowing at least most of our trigger points, knowing also how to calm ourselves down when we feel like we're being triggered because the truth is that you can never really control what can trigger you. Because you can just be minding your own business. Somebody will just come from the back end of the room and come and annoy you. And that's the, tr <laughs> that's just the truth. And then you just get triggered. So what do you do in times like that? Mm. Do you have to wait for someone to come and pacify you? And it's not only even that about somebody annoying you. Cases of issues that people have gone through rape, people See? have gone through abuse, both mentally, emotionally. So there are so many things that build up. Even the abuser. It's coming from somewhere. Yeah. So you see, if you really want to solve mental health problem in Nigeria, everybody first of all need to go through psychological evaluation. True. Because we all at some point have been through some level of mental unhealthiness. Do you understand? Just by being a Nigerian, you have mental problems. No, it's true. It goes precisely. No, I mean by being a Nigerian, you already have you have you are predisposed to mental health conditions mm -hmm. by being a Nigerian. So then you now come and bring it down to Lagos. You know, it gets, it gets even a lot more interesting when you come to Lagos because with Lagos, there's just so many things, right? Uh, you have to wake up at 4 a.m. for a meeting that you have at 9 a.m. You have to do so many things, like literally because of, you know, if, the, if this person is not stressing you, somebody else is stressing you, your workplace, you know, uh, there's so much pressure. So it's just a lot that can happen. You know, so if we if we really want to solve the problem, I like the idea of looking out for each other. Pay attention. Then you also pay attention to your body. I always listen to my body. If my body tells me, "Wow, you need to shut down. I need to shut down." Yeah, yeah. I want to say one last thing. I th also Do think have that. Yeah. Okay, Go I ahead. also think that even in our very because the truth is that there are different sector, there are different places, there are different places of influence for different kinds of people. Mm. Now we talk about church. Now our places of work too has a very great way of influencing us because we literally spend what about eight hours of our day there. Mm. Now I think that. <laughs> Where is Mary? <Mary's> <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I I think that for the HR department of most companies they should adopt the idea of team bonding. Mm. Because the truth is that many people... Team bonding? Mm. Yeah. Because this whole brain you know drain... Everybody wants team bonding. <laughs> is this... I mean, <laughs> but it's, it's something you know that actually... It's something that... I mean, I get you quite all right. But then again, it's something that actually works. Because no, it doesn't. the truth is that you are at work I don't think and... it does. I'm sorry, Dami. I, <laughs> okay, really I think this does. is peculiar to you. Not for mental health. I don't think team bonding... <laughs> It has anything to do with mental health. No, let me explain what I mean by that. Now, the truth is that... If you work better together as a team, it can also help it can you help. be... She's no, the truth is... Bonding. Yeah. See, Mary, the, the truth is that anything can be a stressor. Hmm. The way you work can actually be stressing you. Probably you have too much to do. You know, there's so much on your plate. And maybe your direct supervisor is not even understanding that you can't meet up with this unrealistic deadline. That thing can stress you. And it can put you in a very bad place. Hmm. Do you understand? It can put you in a very bad place. But when we, I mean, even the HR department, they are really 
I mean, looking out for, looking out for, <laughs> looking, out for <laughs> looking out for the members of staff or uh, staff rather of the company. Team bonding. There are different activities that can happen in team bonding. It doesn't have to be maybe sports or something. Mm. Calling, bringing in a, a, a therapist can actually work too. Do maybe yoga a big together brother. as a team. Yeah. Mm. See. Eh? Maybe so. <laughs> Yeah, yes, we do. <laughs> Good evening, my dear beautiful sisters of what are you saying? Hashtag way. Can mental health become an a universal human right? Mental health is a normal thing that happens. To treat mental health, we need to recognize that situate that situation and tackle it, maybe through prayers or counseling. Depression and frustration is part of the contribution of mental health. Nigeria as a whole concerning what is happening is enough to be involved in mental health. Long time no see, my dear beautiful sister Dami. Good to see you again on the show. Oh, I thank meet you. you. A lot. Not thank you, Daniel. Yeah, Hello. Daniel, in a way, thank you. Quickly, quickly. <laughs> Any more? Uh, I don't okay. care. All right. So thank you so much, ladies. I think we had fun with this conversation. Yeah, yeah. Did, did, did. I, I, I more to come, actually. Right. right. Yeah, more, more, more mental health awareness. Yes. Yeah. I think we should do baby steps that yeah. you know we as individuals can take because the truth is there would always be conditions. Mm. That will, you know, trigger, trigger things. Trigger. Yeah. So True. you have to find a way around it. Yeah. So we will keep the conversation going because it's very important. After we do all the shouting, 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 we need to take care of ourselves, you know. Mm -hmm. And it was a good. It's, a, it's also a good way to also let out some steam, you know. Just talk about it. So thank you so much. Panic room. Eh? Panic room. Panic room. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you know, this is so thin. Panic room is a thin. Okay. Before we go. Can mental health be a universal human right? Let's all start with basic health care first in Nigeria. <laughs> Wabu. Make <laughs> <laughs> sure you follow us across all our social media hand handles at OHO Africa. You can interact with us further and drop your comments. And more importantly, follow all our engagements on social media, like, share, and invite your families and friends to watch and follow the conversation. If you missed our quote for today, here it is again. It says, every individual, regardless of their location, occupation, or identity, is entitled to achieve the highest attainable level of mental well-being. We'll see you guys tomorrow at 8 p.m. as we bring another great conversation to your screen. Bye, yeah. Yeah.